A new Washington Post Ipsos poll shows former Vice President Joe Biden with the most support amongst African Americans, but Sanders national campaign co-chair Nina Turner argues that Biden has repeatedly let black voters down in a new op-ed. Here to expand on this and of course to share all the latest with the Sanders campaign is Senator Nina Turner herself. She joins us now via Skype from the great state of New Hampshire. Great to see you. Great to see you both. All right, so make the case that you made in this op-ed, which certainly caught a lot of people's attention, about uh, Joe Biden's record versus Bernie Sanders' record with respect to the African-American community. And it is important for all voters, but particularly the African-American voters, because our community, we give the Democratic Party our votes over 90 percent of the time to really analyze all the candidates, where they've been, where they are, is a great indication of where they will be. And so the contrast between Senator Sanders and Vice President Biden is very clear. That Senator Sanders has been a civil rights champion, he continues to be to this day, but in his deeds, you know, leading core, standing up against housing segregation and school segregation in, in Chicago, in the North. While, meanwhile, Vice President Biden was trying to block school integration of black and white children working with segregation lenders. The difference between the two cannot be more clearer, even coming up right now to, to right now, where you have a vice president saying that he is willing to have a Republican, no doubt, as his vice president, given the deep-seated divisiveness and lack of respect that the Republican Party, especially on the federal level, has shown to the African-American community and to anything towards progress. The senator is fighting against mass incarceration. He wants to legalize marijuana, and we know that those uh, uh, tough on crime bills and also the war on drugs really hurt the African American community disproportionately. And even to this very day, the vice president does not see that and does not agree with that and therefore is not in any position to advance the causes in a very deep way for the African American community. So my message to my community is that everybody should have to earn our vote every single time and not try to use proximity to the African American to proximity to the first African American president as cover for their record. Let's debate this record, let's analyze this record, and let's make a decision that pushes us forward into the future. Mm. And so, Senator Turner, we've seen uh, we've seen polling amongst the African American community, particularly in South Carolina. They say electability is their chief concern, and that they might agree with Senator Sanders on, on criminal justice issue and on health care, that they're afraid they won't be able to win. So how have you been able to, or have you tried to assuage the concerns of those older African Americans who disproportionately support Joe Biden at this moment? Yes, we have, and we are making mm -hmm. great ground in South Carolina and across the country in the African American community, in particular with younger African Americans. I mean, they are solidly with Senator Sanders, and that's across ethnic and racial lines, but particularly the African American community, ages 18 to 29, they outpace all of their peers in their support for Senator Sanders. We have launched a campaign where we have younger uh, African Americans having conversations with their grandparents and their parents about why they support Senator Sanders. It is, I mean, the African American community still to this day, unfortunately, because of the vestiges of racism and Jim Crow and slavery and black codes and all of the other things that have systemically oppressed the African American community, still enduring those things to this day. And so the last thing our community needs is somebody that is going to kowtow to the status quo. The only way we advance as a community is if we have somebody who is going to go against the status quo. All the great advancements that have happened in the African American community thus far has been because of people who have been willing to go against the status quo, not roll with the status quo. So it's important to have those kinds of conversations, and we are. I mean, people like Dr. Cornell West, Brother Danny Glover, Phil Agnew, J. Maul Green, and countless others of all across the generations have been in South Carolina having those conversations with the African American community. And further, it is important to be able to show them the record. And that's what my op-ed was about, because many in the African American community might not necessarily know the records of both men mm -hmm. in a deep way. And I laid out the case. 
So we heard Senator Sanders himself making a pretty strong case against Vice President Biden last week. We see your op-ed making a pretty strong case contrasting those two records. Why do you feel that now is the time to really lay out that argument? We're in 2020. No, no more time. You know, it's, it, it's time to be very clear. And this race, my God, I mean, we cannot stand another four years of uh, somebody like Mr. Trump in, in, in the office, somebody who was both evil and also selfish, you know, given what he just did um, in, 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 you know, what he just did over in, um, in Iran. Mm -hmm. It is, and, and, and Sarkar, you, you asked the question about electability. Yes. You need the exact opposite. And Crystal, this is, the, you need the exact opposite. You can't have anybody that plays around. Senator Sanders voted against war. Senator Sanders has not voted to give President Trump any money for military. Senator Sanders has stood up for the working class all of his life. President Trump lies to the middle class and the working class people of this country. The, 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 what, is, what it is going to take to defeat him is his exact opposite, not somebody who is middle of the way. When you look at trade deals, President Trump ran on a populist message. He said he was going to train the swamp. He said that people in this country would have the best health care ever. And none of that has turned out to be true. So when you juxtaposition the type of freedom fighter that Senator Bernie Sanders is to the record of President Trump, you find that what Senator Sanders is fighting for is what the majority of the working poor and barely middle class in this country want and need. And that is how you win mm -hmm. in a general election. This is not just about the primary, it's how do you win in the general election? You have to have a movement, you have to have energy, you have to have synergy, you have to have commitment, and you have to show the people of this nation that you are going to rock with them against the entrenched Wall Street interests of this nation. And Senator Sanders is that candidate. And I just want the African-American community as, as well as all working class communities to see who the real champion in this race is. Senator Turner, I also wanted to ask you, there was a Politico report that was flying around this weekend about a volunteer script um, talking about Senator Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Warren has accused the Sanders campaign of trashing her. We have a clip of that and I want to be able to get your reaction. I was disappointed to hear that Bernie is sending his volunteers out to trash me. Bernie knows me and has known me for a long time. Uh, he knows who I am, where I come from, what I have worked on and fought for, and the coalition and grassroots movement we're trying to build. Democrats want to win in 2020. We all saw the impact of the factionalism in 2016, and we can't have a repeat of that. Is it trashing somebody to highlight the, their record and people who support them? Well, in today's world, it is, you know, you go to social media. You know, I'm, I was really sad to see that because as Senator Warren laid out that Senator Sanders knows her, she knows him. She knows that he would never do anything like that. So when she says he sent out his volunteers, nothing could be further from the truth. I just led a texting, uh, a texting um, series just a couple of days ago, a texting training just a couple of days ago. And I was on that call for the majority of that call. Nothing like that was said. And when I talked, I was just there to uplift the volunteers who are making millions and millions of text messages across this country to their neighbors and their friends and to strangers. And so, no, Senator does not rock like that. And Senator Warren knows that to be true. They're even fundraising off of that right now, which is sad. Um, it, it, it just shows how how low, well, anyway, I'm just, I'm really, I'm sad. She said I'm sad. Uh, mm. She knows him, he knows her. So it's a lot of sadness going on right now. Going on right now. I mean, what did you make? Because I have to be honest with you, when I saw this volunteer call, and I know there's some question about whether this is even authentic or something that volunteers were using, but the language of it, it, this is the criticism that she's so upset about. It says, people who support Elizabeth Warren are highly educated, more affluent people who are going to show up and vote Democrat no matter what, and she's bringing no new bases into the Democratic Party. I mean, we analyze the polling on this show all the time. The truth of the matter is, her support is disproportionately white and affluent. 
Do you think that that's a problematic case to make about whether she ultimately is the best candidate to go up against Donald Trump? I didn't see anything wrong with it personally. It's just really laying out the facts as they are. Conversely, the supporters of Senator Sanders tend to be less educated, less affluent. It's more of a multiracial coalition. We see that the polls show that people of color are polling really high, you know, in totality, not just the African-American community, in their support, especially the millennial generation, with Senator Sanders. Those are the facts, too. So if somebody, uh, you know, put that out there on the call sheet, it would be, in fact, true. So, uh, again, the senator would never support, you know, the trashing of any candidate. He has never directed anybody to do such a thing. But the comparison of records and laying out the facts about the demographics that each candidate, you know, the same could be said about Mayor, you know, former Mayor Pete Buttigieg, yeah. that his, his supporters tend to trend more affluent, you know, more educated. So it's just, just, it's just what it is. Yeah, it's what yeah, the it's, it's what the numbers really say. It's not it's not an attack. It's just the fact at this point. Upset about it. Um, last question for you, Senator yeah. Turner. I know you're you're in New Hampshire. You may not be uh, part of the senator's debate prep going right into tomorrow night. But what can we expect on the stage from him tomorrow? The senator is going to do what he always does, which is tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. He is going to show the American people yet again that he is the best candidate with the best vision and also the courage to pull forward this nation, bring this nation together, and also be the shining leader that even this world needs. He's also going to show that the entire Democratic platform is animated by his courage, the courage that he had in 2016 to say to the American people, you deserve better than what you are getting, and to dare them to dream bigger. That is what is going to happen on that stage with Senator Sanders. One thing we do know is very predictable. So we already know how the senator going to roll tomorrow night. <laughs> We're looking forward to it. Thank you, Senator Turner. We always appreciate your Thank time. You. Thank you. Thank you Next on Rising, political scientist Dave Redloss. He explains why the Iowa caucus matters. That's next.